everyone thinks about coming at you. Now, I honestly could talk for hours upon hours about this topic of using GPUs within the context of VR, both on the client side as well as on the server side. And to keep myself sane and not to extend this video tremendously, we're going to be specifically looking very high level at the considerations that you'll want to think about when leveraging GPUs on servers for Cloud XR and remote rendering, specifically since that's been the topic that we've been going over on the channel for the last several weeks now. And even within that, there's just so much to go over from the types of GPUs that are available and which ones you would want to consider, how you can actually go about using that, the use cases for various different GPUs, as well as some of the feature benefits that you might be getting from different types of GPUs that you use on servers, and even future iterations of GPUs that will be ultimately impacting how you consider leveraging Cloud XR. So there's a lot to go over, but if you do have specific questions about GPUs and VR, love to continue those discussions down in the comments below, because honestly, as much as I'm trying to convey a lot of information in this video, there's still a ton more of that. I need to learn personally and by having these discussions about GPUs that's how we ultimately kind of can help each other learn what are the best practices and ways we can make the most out of some pretty powerful hardware and if you're interested more on this topic as well as other topics especially around the remote rendering cloud XR space make sure to leave a like on that video and to subscribe for future content on that so you definitely don't miss out let's first start with the different types of GPUs that are available on the server side. And quite frankly, unlike there are options on the consumer side of things, there really aren't that many options when it comes to different types of GPUs that you could use on cloud computing or even edge computing. For starters, the de facto GPU that's there today on most of these different platforms is the Tesla T4. Now, this is a GPU that's been out since 2018, so still fairly modern. and the primary reason that this is kind of the de facto GPU for the server side is simply due to its flexibility. It works pretty well in machine learning and AI use cases, but then also with a little bit of virtualization, NVIDIA is able to provide drivers that are able to actually run graphical workloads on these GPUs and do so in a pretty performant manner. They also come with some hardware encoding and decoding capabilities as well. So all around for the many use cases that you would consider using GPUs for, NVIDIA does have their bases covered with this GPU, which is why you would consider installing it into all of these data centers that are there around the world. While it is that de facto because of its flexibility, there are other different GPUs that are available. So recently, as of 2020, for example, NVIDIA has introduced their Ampere series, and there's some pretty interesting innovations that they're doing across the board with Ampere. I do think some of that technology is still a little bit early on, but I think ultimately that's the trajectory NVIDIA is trying to go with their Ampere series. I'll broaden up the doors to maybe more specialized GPUs that I think hopefully bring down the cost structure. The other side of this token is AMD. So AMD, of course, typically kind of always been second tier when it comes to GPUs, but I think there's a lot of promise when it comes to their cost structure. There's all, there are still a ton of issues that AMD is continually working through, but at the same time, it is the GPU that Google chose to use for Stadia and their cloud gaming space. And when you're comparing costs, AMD is significantly cheaper. I will say that in our context of Unity render streaming, Nvidia is going to be the de facto winner. And it's primarily due to the fact that they come with hardware encoding that is readily available through Unity's integration with NVIDIA GPUs. I think Unity will be working towards that hardware encoding on AMD GPUs, but at the time they currently don't support that. Whenever that comes, then I think AMD GPUs might be a compelling offer when it comes to using Cloud XR at the cloud. But for now, I think just the fact that NVIDIA GPUs support that encoding on Unity render streaming is the sole reason that you would want to stick to NVIDIA GPUs because hardware encoding is significantly faster across the board for encoding videos and then using that smaller data footprint to send that off to your web browser to be rendered into VR. U ultimately for Cloud XR, you want the minimal latency possible. And because of the speed of hardware encoding, 
it is almost a prerequisite to have hardware encoding in your stack for supporting WebXR through remote render streaming. So for that reason alone, I would really recommend sticking to these Tesla T4 or really any NVIDIA card, at least until Unity incorporates AMD render streaming as part of their offering with Unity render streaming. With that kind of explained, there are two use cases that you really need the GPU for. So the first one being graphics, as it's kind of obvious given the name of GPUs, it's graphical processing unit, right? So when you're rendering, of course, you want that rendering on the GPU to maximize your rendered capabilities and to output a really compelling visual image. The, the primary reason, of course, to do render streaming in the first place is because of the fact that you want a very powerful GPU that's capable of rendering high fidelity graphics that you can send onto any client and a cheap client at that that's just integrated with WebXR and can output some really amazing graphical fidelity. The other equally important use case is, as we mentioned, around hardware encoding and decoding. The ability of, for your GPU to shrink that video footage into the minimal encoded value, send that over to the web browser and then for the web browser to decode that and then display, display that within VR. The T4, as I mentioned before, has that hardware encoding that's pretty readily available to use. On the graphics side, it's a little funky because the Tesla T4 actually doesn't have any display adapter. And as a result, you need to virtualize all of those graphical workloads, which NVIDIA does provide drivers to do, but it does come as part of their licensing construct, which to be honest, is a little funky, but I think it's just kind of one of those things that they're still working through. The, the Ampere series, I think, actually tends to do a much better job of how they handle this and so I'm really looking forward to those future developments but for the time being we kind of have to deal with the fact that everything kind of gets virtualized through the Tesla T4 drivers to handle those graphical workloads in in a seamless fashion at least what does that actually mean when you go about setting up say a virtual machine server on the cloud well if you're using Windows or Linux for that matter in a desktop-esque environment, so say Windows Server and you have a GUI or Ubuntu and you have the Ubuntu desktop, you'll want to be installing these specialized drivers and then you'll have to set up a license associated with that. On most of the cloud platforms, they provide images that will enable you to do that. So for example, when I was testing on Amazon, there are Amazon AMIs, which stand for, I think, Amazon Machine Images, that you can utilize that have the NVIDIA drivers built in, the licensing structure, uh, implemented and you can just get that bundled all together and deployed at the cloud. It does quite frankly take a little bit of work to get accustomed to and we'll talk a little bit more about that in future videos as we kind of dive more into the technical side of utilizing the SDK and getting that running on the cloud. But for, for now, just kind of keep in mind, you really want to stick to these AMIs or whatever the virtual machine image that is provided to you in order to save time actually setting up a server in and of itself. Now, I think the other key consideration when thinking about GPUs and remote render streaming is scalability. And to be honest, I think this is probably the area of GPUs and remote streaming and cloud gaming and cloud XR that needs the most work. The way you can look at it is there are kind of two ways that you can go about scaling GPUs. One is by partitioning a single GPU to be used by multiple different applications or multiple different users. The other way is by taking one GPU and time slicing it so that the GPU will be given to one application and then quickly swap to another application and quickly swap to another application and then you circulate them back and forth in a manner that is convenient for every user of that GPU. Today, that time slicing is what is implemented, especially on these Tesla T4 cards, as they don't support any way of actually slicing physically a GPU. The slicing of a GPU tends to be a really complicated topic, but for now, when you're looking at scaling out, you're, you're looking at time slicing a GPU across multiple different applications and sharing that GPU across multiple different applications. Today, that's done through NVIDIA's grid service, which again is a licensed product and say what you will about it, at least it does the job for helping you scale. And for now, that is 
correct way to go about scaling out your GPU applications. It is pricey, I will admit, and, and if you look at some of that cost structure that we did within the Linux video, that is something that is kind of an issue. But at the same time, I think those costs will start to go down over time as we start to see more innovations within the GPU space and a little bit more competition, I think, from AMD as well. So that's just the high level overview on GPUs. We can go deeply into specific topics as we go into more of the technical side of things, such as implementing this within Windows versus within Linux. But I'd love to know down in the comments below, what are some of those topics that you'd really like to see covered within the GPU spectrum? So I think that'll wrap this up for now. If you did learn something from this video, consider leaving a like as it really does help out the channel a ton. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Confused man.